Oh, hello there. My name's Bowser, and this is a wargaming creation. Ah, the Empire War Wagon. Look at it in all its glory. So this was a fairly iconic model from way back when. I mean, we're talking, what, 30 years ago, give or take. Um, and it's a great, great model. Loads of character, loads of fun. Um, found out that they were based on a real life concept, which is pretty interesting. Um, so medieval troops would get up in a little fortification that was dragged around and then dumped in the battlefield and then they'd fire crossbows out. Um, which I love the idea of. Um, but I don't know if you're like me, but I got into collecting Empire relatively late in life. And obviously a lot of the stuff is out of production. Um, and I miss having this uh, item in my collection. And there is absolutely no way I was going to pay £200, dollars uh, for something similar on, well, the actual model on eBay. Uh, it, I love the model, just not that much. Yeah, certainly not £200 worth much. Um, so looking at it, uh, I thought, well, why not make my own one? And I thought I'd share that process with you guys as well. Um, so you can do a ride along with me and create your own. Um, conceptually pretty easy. A couple of disclaimers. Um, I can't make horses from scratch. Um, wouldn't even want to try. So uh, you're best off sourcing those from eBay or another supplier. Um, I will not be showing you how to make horses in this video. Uh, additionally, wheels. Um, I didn't, I probably could scratch build wheels. Um, I didn't think it would be worth the effort. There are loads of good um, producers of um, resin wheels that are the right scale for 28 millimeter um, wargaming. I suggest you go and, uh, and find those. Uh, if I can be bothered, I'll put a link in the description to where I got mine from. Um, but I'm kind of of the mindset that you'd be better off just going and finding yourself. Um, who knows what else you'll uncover as you have a bit of a dig around. Either way, very easy to search for 28mm fantasy wheels on eBay or another site. Um, so with that out of the way, let's see how we get on. So we start off with our balsa strips. So these are five millimeter squared um, strips of balsa wood. I've cut them to 80 millimeters or eight centimeters long. Um, and that'll form the base of the war wagon side panel. We're then gonna put some posts uh, running alongside the, uh, the, the, the panel. So you can see that for scale, they're about two centimeters. So the, the mat, the cutting mat that I've got is a centimeter scale. And you can see how they have uh, lined up and um, how we've attached those onto the uh, existing panel uh, in that sort of arrangement. So they will form the superstructure for the side panel of the wall wagon. And what we've done is use super glue um, to attach those nice and quick, nice and clean, no overspill that you might get with PVA. We're then using, what's it, two millimeter, three millimeter thick uh, balsa strip, uh, very easy to work with. Just get a nice uh, sharp knife and cut along the grain and you can get some nice um, thin strips uh, to work with. And we're gonna actually use that to panel the uh, the side panel of the war wagon and fill the, uh, the, the spaces between the posts that we've created. Okay, you can see here the beginnings of that here. Uh, two ways you could do this, you could either measure uh, and cut and put them in, or you could glue them in and then cut. Uh, which means you can get a more accurate um, leveling of the posts. Um, attention to detail is pretty key here. You're working on quite a small scale um, comparatively. So anything you can do to ensure no gaps and the right heights of everything uh, really pays off in the end. As you can see here, uh, we've done a really good job of ensuring everything's the right height, the same height. Uh, we've used super glue. Not too worried about the overspill that you see there. I was pretty heavy handed. Uh, and decided that we're actually going to cover that up um, with cardboard in a moment anyway. The, the intermediary paneling, so the ones that go between the two, uh, the three taller panels, is slightly smaller scale. So you're looking about one and three quarter centimeters there, I think it is, one and a half centimeters. Um, 
just to create that sort of fortified look. Again, similar process, slot it in, measure up, cut, and you're away. We'll be um, creating cross beams across the top of the panels. Figure this will probably be the easiest way of doing it rather than creating the uh, entire superstructure first and then filling in the blanks. Um, you can go whichever way you feel comfortable with, but this is easiest for me. So with our panels in place alongside our posts, um, I'm then going to go ahead and start cutting down the crossbar uh, to the appropriate sizes so that we've got a decent crossbar um, alternating between each, um, there's probably a word for it, fortified bit. Um, so a nice sharp knife again, nice clean cuts uh, to get um, a decent cut through those posts is key because it's very easy to start chipping um, balsa wood once you, once you start hacking away at it. So do take your time when you're cutting those um, posts and, um, and then sand down where appropriate. So I've glued that down there, figured it'd be easier just to glue across the top and then cut out the difference. I can then use that difference in the, uh, the bit below, um, the shorter part of the fortification, which we'll see in a second. Okay, so here it is all attached, a little bit sloppier than I would have liked, a few gaps there, but not overly worried about it because what we're going to do is fill the cardboard anyway, and I can always use green stuff to fill in the gaps, the joins, uh, which I will be doing further down the line. And you can see already with a bit of sanding, um, that's already looking a little bit cleaner. Um, I've also, I don't know if it's showing in the picture there, but I've also um, tried to detail the back a little bit. So that'll look really nice um, from the inside, a bit of detailing, especially with a, a decent paint job. So the next thing we want to do is start tiling the inside of those posts. So that'll form the, um, the plate armor that you see in the original pictures. And we're going to use a cereal box for that. Um, and we're going to use the reverse side, or no, the, the outside of the cereal box, the shiny side anyway. We're going to use that because when you end up painting it, it's going to create a less porous, uh, more reflective surface. You can see it, you know, it's catching the light there already without any paint on it. So it'll just give a more convincing metallic effect. So we're going to put uh, those on line by line. I think um, doing really thin strips is key there. You could take an easy way out and just leave it as panelling, but I think it's worth um, going ahead and trying to create uh, as many of those tiny little shingles as you can to really sell the idea of scale and detail. Um, I wasn't happy with the depth of the original um, panelling, so I've bolted it out with a couple of sheets of cardboard. And you can see the um, uh, the end result of the tiling, um, and the, the plate mail, I suppose, the, the plate armour on the, uh, the barricade there. But it was really smart. Really pleased with that. Added a few chips and nooks and crannies into it as well uh, to sell the effect of, uh, of detailing and scale. Um, and pretty happy. Started working on the front piece now. And this point, I was starting to get a little bit lazy and looking for alternatives uh, to the longer haul, which would have been creating another two of those pieces. Uh, this is a quick um, close up of the floor paneling. So I've actually scored the flooring uh, with the back of the uh, the knife, Stanley knife or something similar um, to create extra detail and depth in the wood. I'm now creating the under carriage, under carriage, under bit um, that supports the uh, the main fortification. So this is the bit that the wheels rest on and the axle and everything else like that, the LC structure. Again, two centimeter chops of five millimeter wood. And at this point, I was considering doing a curved piece as per the original, but doesn't really work. It kept crumbling. Um, balsa wood is not great for doing small detail curves. I mean, better people, but more skilled people probably are better luck than me. Um, I was having no joy and I got frustrated. So in the end, I just opted for a sort of diagonal piece rather than a curved piece. Um, after um, eating all the pieces I wasn't happy with, uh, I moved swiftly on and just went for a slightly lazier um, slanty angle instead of a curved angle. Don't think in the overall result made any difference whatsoever, so happy I made that choice. Okay, next up, uh, we are gluing in those posts at a centimetre gap in between and get a nice um, level of uh, symmetry. 
and you can see those slanting posts now attached. Could have spent a bit more time trying to make sure those were exactly accurate, but I don't think it really made much difference overall. They're pretty damn close and they line up really nicely. So pretty pleased with that. Now the boring part would have been having to recreate uh, those, uh, all those pieces another two times, especially the shingles. Um, it is worth doing if, um, unlike me, you can, if you can't cast them. So I duplicated my effort um, by uh, in resin uh, rather than redoing it again. But in hindsight, if I had my time again, I'd probably have taken the punch and gone through and created all of the uh, pieces again in balsa wood and card rather than creating them in resin. The reason being is that the resin, I'm you know, I'm not a, a top caster. I can't uh, do multi, what they called, um, uh, two piece molds. So my casts, although they look pretty good, only a few bubbles here and there, nothing too much uh, to worry about. Uh, that can't be fixed with a bit of green stuff, it was only one-sided. So on the back side, you've just got a shiny surface rather than the detailing that you would get if you had obviously just used the original materials of balsa wood and card. Um, so that was a sacrifice I was willing to take. I wasn't that fussed about the idea of it being one-sided in terms of detailing. A lot of the detailing on the other side would be obscured or hidden anyway. Um, so for the sake of actually getting a project completed and on the table, I took the hit. Unfortunately, there were some casualties of war and the original pieces were lost in the mold making process. Um, lessons learned there, certainly won't be doing that again, um, but not too fast uh, overall. I've got some great pieces that I can reuse again and again and again. Um, and that is precisely what I'll do if I decided I want to flesh out the, um, the army of miniatures I've got. So, you can see, not a bad attempt. These are the resin casts of the, the wood originals and uh, pretty happy with those. They're looking pretty smart. You can see the back is shiny and non-detailed. Um, and do you know what? I don't really care. With a decent paint job, I'll dull that down. We're going to add some men in there, obscuring the detail anyway. Um, you could even go a little bit further, the extra mile, and score in the details or carve in the details with a knife. Uh, you can see I sort of did that with the tops of the uh, the pieces. But with, you know, people in there um, and details on the outside, um, you're not going to notice. He seems pretty happy. So I'm happy. Um, yeah, otherwise, uh, pretty happy. We just used um, super glue uh, to um, bind all those pieces. Only took a few seconds. Pretty happy with the turnout. Um, next up, we're going to have to uh, cast the undercarriages as well um, and attach the wheels uh, that I'd bought from uh, online. Uh, I didn't cast the wheels, they were they were shot bought. Um, okay. There we go. So we've attached the superstructure below the, the fortification, got a wheel there for scale. Uh, it's really starting to take shape now and um, starting to resemble the iconic image of the original war wagon. Uh, we do need to work out what we're going to do with the axle, the front piece, um, that the uh, the, the horse yoke um, will attach to. I think it's called that. Um, so we did, again, a similar process, 5x5 five five millimeter bolster strips. Um, this one's cut into 3 centimeters by 2, two centimeters, I think it is, uh, and attached. And this will form the, um, uh, the, I want to say, axle at the front of the carriage. So we did one there um, with um, a solid. We're going to need one with a, a gap in the middle at the back for the yoke of the axle to, to attach to. Um, and we're also going to need the, 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 the fronty bit that attaches to the horse um, and work out what we're going to do there. So you can see um, how we put that together. Um, you've got the, the fronty bit that attaches to the horse at the bottom there that sort of sanded down to create a, um, a more interesting shape than just a than just a, a stick. Um, the, the piece of the gap at the, that you see in the, the, the footage here is going to go at the front, the other piece is at the back, and we'll have the yolky bit sticking out the front. Still don't have a way of understand, or didn't have at the time a, a way of um, attaching uh, the the crossbar, or even creating a crossbar that was convincing that the horses would then attach to. Um, the, the the curved yoke you see in the original uh, 
creating curved pieces in balsa wood as we all discovered is a bit of a nightmare so i was still scratching my head at this point on how i was going to do that because i didn't want to create it from scratch um but what we did do is cast the the sticky outy bit as it's going to continue to be known as and we pop that on the, the front there it's not glued down so it can be repositioned or angled as appropriate and attached for painting but fairly happy with it uh, you can see the other wheels there um, from the pack really happy with those and this is what i came up with for the yoke in the end so excuse the quality of the footage but um, essentially we used or oh, i used some um, mdf off cuts from um, some of those mdf scenic pieces uh, that you see around they were circular in shape i cut them into quarters i used half uh, two of those quarters and put them back to back and coupled them with an empire shield i think that provides a pretty convincing yoke so that one's certainly uh, the shoulders or the backs of the horses now as you can see here so with the superstructure in place and the wheels attached and the horses there for um uh, to show off you can see how um a quick rummage in the bits box including some pieces from the artillery kit um and some amazing gargoyles that uh, are found online um uh, empire shield and just some other bits and bobs uh from the uh from your bits box slap those on uh, and you can create a pretty convincing looking war wagon i think the really important pieces are um just some shields attached to the uh the front and back and the something some sort of detailing on the on the sides everything else is superfluous and you can get away with um the lack of detail if you like um because the, the, the miniature itself is pretty small it's a small scale net model um the detailing and the work that you put into the original paneling and into the uh the wood um will sell the effect of, of it being detailed that coupled with a fairly decent paint job nice bit of dry brushing this will come up super um so the extra bits of detail were um really uh, just to um go that extra mile use up a few bits of my bits box i had to hand uh, but i think uh hopefully you'll agree that it came out pretty convincing it's not too dissimilar from the uh original um i could certainly go harder on the authenticity if i wanted to um but it, a lot of it came down to aesthetic and personal design uh preferences so looking forward to getting this uh, bad boy painted up in part two and uh thank you very much for joining me in this ride along and uh, any comments or feedback or if you have any questions about how to make your own then do let me know in the comments but look forward to seeing you next time cheers and goodbye